Alright, so I just went over this Morphling replay. It was specifically a Samael safe lane replay. It took me forever to find, but honestly, I realized why I think this hero is so good, Morphling in particular, and why every single safe lane or mid lane player should learn this hero. It is incredibly abusable, and in my opinion, the best at what it does, which is DPS. I really don't think there is a hero that rivals the DPS or the man fightability of Morphling. It's unbelievable. I don't know what hero, like what hard carry matches up to Morphling in a 1v1, like with even items. Because you simply can turn into them, use their HP, abuse more strength, more agility, you have a disengage spell, you have one of the highest damage nukes, you have a stun if you needed, and your attack speed is bonkers, including your armor due to your agility shift. Overall, in this video, you're going to be learning the tips and tricks Sumail applies in his game to ruin the enemy team, even after a pretty hard landing stage. Because I understand that you might watch a Topson replay or see highlights of him crushing mid and dominating and snowballing the whole game, but what happens and what do you do if this isn't the case, right? What do you do if your lane is hard? That's what we're going to be looking at here. Before we jump into the video, I want to let you guys know that you can check out guides just like this one made by top tier pros over at GameLoop.com. We have thousands of guides that can teach you the game of Dota 2 in depth and help you gain MMR much quicker than you usually would. Now let's jump into it. You notice right off the bat, he's getting giga harassed by this Legion and Lina, and there's nothing CM can do to help him. CM makes the best play possible and pulls, but for now, as a diligent hard carry player, he's going to wait back, use creep aggro, and chill for the pull. Nothing particularly good about Morphling here. In fact, this is one of the main weaknesses of Morphling. His early levels can be abused. So take this into consideration. When playing Morphling, be careful in the early levels. Do not act as if you were 5 slotted. There's actually this phenomenon that I've noticed. I don't know if it's true or not. I've been speculating a little bit. But players, after playing a hero and playing them for the second time, they will act as if they are coming off the last game. They'll be used to the high attack speed, high DPS of their last game, like the late game, and they'll approach the laning stage as if they're still in that state. And that's just not how Dota works. So when you're playing Morphling, understand, early levels, you are not that strong. You need to sustain till you're level 2, so you can secure creeps with your nukes, or so you can at least trade with it. In fact, level 3 is your typical spike, because if you look at the stats, the shift rate goes from 1 to 4. A significant increase, right, by all standards, right, because he only has level 1 shift, and as a result, he dies. It's just ridiculously slow. Your spike in the laning stage to be able to trade and bait people with an attribute shift is level 3. Level 3 is your timing. Pre that, you're securing creeps, using creep aggro, sustain through magic stick and tangos, using your attribute shift to keep yourself in the lane. So there's a few main ways to abuse regen on Morphling. This is the first one we're going to go over. There are a few main tactics that typically involve magic wand, salve, or what I like to call the 200 HP Morphling bug. Now it's not a bug, but we'll be going over it. This is the main way in which you literally abuse a Dota mechanic to win your landing stage. First off here, you're going to notice he shifts all agility, goes down to 1 HP, and uses his salve. For salves, this is particularly efficient. Um, and it's what you should be doing in the lightning stage, right? You go down to 0 HP, you pop yourself, and you're a full HP hero again, ready to shift strength. You notice now, he can actually shift some strength. Not that this is a good lane, but still, overall, a pretty solid trade. Next thing I want to note before we go into the regen, next regen part, because it doesn't come up for a little bit, is how you should bait people using attribute shift. It is not simply, you get gone on, click the red button. No, 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 no. You need to be a lot more diligent than that. You click it based on their spells. Once Delina misses her stun here, you have to consider that, and he knows that he can't die quickly. So he's going to turn it on and off. You notice if you pay close attention, he turns it off briefly to mess with the Legion's perception of his HP, right? As crazy as this sounds, he's messing with her perception. She thinks she's going to kill him, right? Because level one attribute shift gave her the idea that she can kill him through right clicks but he knows as the experienced morphling player or at least as a great dota player that he can now shift quickly and same thing for the lena constantly this is really impressive really hard to do but you should try to get to this level it's always based off their spells whenever a spell is coming at him he is ready to shift right he doesn't know if the nukes are coming in because the legion hers is on cooldown he probably knows that but the lena he has to be careful about once again he sees Alina approaching here, sees her going for the cast animation, and starts to shift so that he's never in kill potential. 
but you shift based on what the enemy is doing. It is not based off your gut reaction. You have to consider spells in order to maximize value. So here we are going to look at the abusable Morphling 200 HP bug. All you have to do is simply go down to one strength or near one strength where you have one HP and then go back up. And when you go back up to around 800 HP or so, for here he goes up to 700, you gain 200 HP for no reason, for no reason. Instead of just gaining the strength back and staying at one HP, you gain health if you go down to one HP. This is so important. Why is this so good? Obviously because you're getting 200 free HP, but more importantly, he's able to save his wand for the next engagement. And at this level of Dota, actually at any level of Dota, the little things are what matters most, right? He's able to go aggressive on the Legion here because he knows he has a wand to back himself up, right? Not only that, if he takes an engagement, he can then fully heal himself afterwards, right? By saving HP. He does it again, right? Right here. Another free 200 HP. Basically, anytime you go under 200 or so, you can use this to just gain your maximum HP back. And you do this especially if you get pressure to high strength, right? If you get pressure to high strength, it's very important that you go down back to zero strength and come back up for your free HP. And as a result here of constantly abusing the bug, he for some reason is always at a relatively stable HP amount. And once again, he's able to save his wand and use it for full HP. In fact there, I don't even think he had to use his wand. Uh, I guess he probably wanted it for the mana, but you can see why is this so good. You can save money on regen, not that you shouldn't buy regen, your priority always should be on regen, but in general, you can gain HP out of thin air. No other hero can do that, except for Abaddon. For some reason that hero can kill itself for no punishment. But the point is, you gain HP if you're not using this trick, you are not abusing Morphling to its full potential. In fact, you're probably struggling in the laning stage because this hero is not that strong in the lane. Like, in the early levels, its damage is high, but against high pressure lanes, it's not that strong. Against the passive lane, you're probably like, ah, whatever, I crush the lane no matter what. Yeah, that's true. That's why this hero is also very abusable. You crush weaker lanes, non-pressure lanes due to your base damage. But in situations like this, in hard lanes, you use the 200 HP bug, you buy a wand, you buy a fairy fire, you buy extra tangos, you buy a salve, all of these things, all of this extra regen and this using this bug allows a hero like Morphling that can't buy a stout shield and has a very weak lane support to have a game, right? I can't imagine, I can't even imagine, I don't even want to think about a 3k player being in his laning situation here. No offense all you 3k players, but if you don't take into consideration all of these little things, you will get dumpstered by players and lanes like this because they're going to put high aggression and all the little things counts. So I hope you understand that, right? You can make any lane work. Now, I can't wait in the comments for you guys to say, well, what about this tri lane against my solo off lane Crystal Maiden? Okay, it's relative, but hopefully that kind of makes a good point. Now, I'm going to briefly talk about item build for Morphling. You want to get two Wraith Bands at least. Uh, a lot of mid players are actually buying four, but for the safe lane, it is a lot better to buy them wand early as you're going to have a lot more spells casted at you and you often need the sustain a lot more than mid. In addition, I highly recommend getting power treads. A lot of people go bots. This is kind of more of an older thing and you really need the stats to be able to fight early and just farm faster. So this is kind of the standard build. Two Wraith Bands, power treads, and a wand. Can't go wrong. All right, let's break down his first major fight of the game and just see how he uses his spells to manage to stay alive for as long as possible. So in this situation here, he recognizes the Legion's potential spell usage and therefore starts to morph strength anticipating the duel but he knows he can bait it out and there's no possible way they can burst him through it and so he turns on his strength morph right pretty straightforward gets stunned up but then in this situation he realizes he has no kill potential if he doesn't start morphing down again and he understands that the sf has committed his shadow rays as a result he can morph down to a relatively low amount of agility also because he has a wand and a fairy fire right and as a result of not going down to 1 HP, he can still tank the Legion Commander arrows. Now, the 200 HP trick once again getting abused right here, down to minimum strength. Oh, he actually pops one, my apologies. But the thing is, you always want to be able to go down to minimum strength in fights, if you can, right? Because then you can use your wand very effectively, you can use a salve, fairy fire, or the 200 HP bug, right? Any of these things will allow you to gain HP. 
And then this is where you get dumpstered by CCNC. <laughs> so, overall good play, but then he gets trashed at the end. So for his next item purchase, he buys Lifesteal. To put this simply, because your hero has high damage, high attack speed, and a low HP pool, Lifesteal is value. It allows you to stay on the map for as long as possible because even if you have to go to max strength to stay alive from a gank, you can then go down to minimum agility and use your lifesteal to heal the full. You notice he can cut a creep wave and with no stout shield and no natural HP regeneration item besides a mango I guess, he's able to stay full HP. And this is super valuable on Morphling because all the HP matters. If you're not careful about your HP management, you will not do damage on this hero. I saw someone comment recently that they were playing Morphling and they had issues sustaining their damage. Um, and basically, it's because they're not taking these steps proper, such as buying a magic wand, bottle salves, uh, and using the HP trick, as well as purchasing lifesteal to sustain your HP. Very important on Morphling, so definitely keep that in mind. At this point in the game, uh, his top lane is getting pressured, so as a safe lane player, this is a very natural rotation. Your safe lane gets pressured out, so you go to the enemy side of the lane. Um, he cuts the creep wave, takes the tier 1 tower, farms the small camp, constantly hitting creeps, right? If you're not hitting a creep, you should be hitting a tower. If you're not hitting a tower, you should be hitting a creep. And that's kind of a general rule for safe laners. But now here, you know, it's no problem ending up on the jug. This is what the lifesteal allows you to do. Even though he gets pressured, he can basically stay relatively full HP. If he doesn't have this lifesteal, he's going to have to go to the jungle, right? Period. Or he's going to have to buy a self. But as a result of his wand and his lifesteal, he can stay in the lane and continue pressuring. I can't stress this enough how good lifesteal really is. I'm morphling, so the fight starts out, and the first thing I want to note is how he uses morph. Morph is a very confusing ability, and I'm going to give some guidelines to hopefully make your life a little bit easier. Morph you should basically use at the beginning of every single fight, at least a major fight, or you should use it for pickoffs. When using it for a major fight, there's a few things you want to consider. What heroes have the best spells, um, and typically this is low cooldown spell heroes. Now, on the enemy team, they are actually fantastic morph candidates. Heroes such as Enigma are not really good because they have longer cooldowns. Like, any longer cooldown hero typically isn't that great, um, as their ultimate is the majority of their kids. So ultimate based heroes, not that good. But nukers and sustain heroes like Abaddon are really good, right? Because you can steal a Photic Shield to perch anything off yourself and Mist Coil to heal your teammates. Juggernaut, you can use Blade Fury to spin and then attack in more form, or you can have the healing word for your team. Lina, you have two very low cooldown spells that don't waste your mana, and Legion, you get a purge and a new. Finally, SF. Right, these are all actually very good heroes. I would I would put these at top tier candidates because they have low cooldown spells that you can use when things like Waveform, Adaptive Strike are on cooldown, right? Being able to switch in between your stolen spells and your natural spells is very efficient. So you notice here, the fight breaks out, and he turns into the Lina. So the Lina was unfortunately pretty low mana, and that's why you want to use it earlier on. So you make sure you're turning into someone with decent mana, because you'll notice now he's full out of HP, but regardless, he's able to stay as Lina, use her HP pool if needed, but more importantly, cast her spells. Now this fight, nothing really crazy happens, kind of just goes even but they were able to negate a 3k lead by him pushing in lanes and drawing away a lot of pressure. Now, what does he do after a fight? This is very important. After any fight, what should you do as Morphling? Should you go back to base? No, this is why you buy Lifesteal. You morph down a little bit and you regain the majority of your HP, especially if you're pushing a lane, right? Because then you'll have to take no damage, but you do not go back to base. Going back to base is unbelievably inefficient on Morphling. If you don't have the mana, because he has a CM this game, you should be buying items such as Clarities and Mangoes, but you should really never try to go back to base as Morphling. It's almost never necessary as long as you have Lifesteal. Here he manages to TP into a fight. Um, to be honest, I think he could have just stayed bottom here. For your solo queue games, I recommend pushing in the enemy safe lane or whatever the safer farm is for as long as possible. This will just guarantee you scaling. You notice here he rotates in and it kind of wastes him a lot of time. Not to say that was necessarily all his fault, but it's a lot safer, especially if people aren't farming around the map, to secure a lead purely by pushing in a lane for as long as possible. And that's very important on Morphling because you need an item advantage on this hero, or else what happens is the fights naturally go poorly because you get forced to strength early and therefore you don't do a lot of damage. So the main tenets of Morphling, get an item advantage, or at least buy a lot of stats so that you can fight early, then morph into someone early. Once you morph into someone early, you are guaranteeing that you basically have two HP pools and two sets of spells. This is not fair. It is just not fair. So you have to take Morphling like that. 
right? You need to abuse these things. If you do not do that, you're going to get stuck in the predicament of being at 3000 HP with no spells and then turning into a 200 HP hero that you can't even use. In fact, it will just get you killed. So use those tenants as a basis and that should already get you off to a much better start when taking fights. So you notice in his downtime, he's just pushing in lanes. I think a lot of carry players or just Dota players in general try to would do way too much. I've said this a lot. As a hero like Morphling, you farm faster than the majority heroes, um, especially if they don't have cleave or any AoE abilities. Triggernaut, for instance, right? If you look at his item build, he has Yasha drums, so he has to rely on waves to get farm. Morphling, on the other hand, just has lifesteal and a ton of agi, so he can take jungle camps for days. As long as he's looking for the next creep wave, it's efficient. You notice he goes from the jungle straight to the wave, and this is your natural rotation. Right, you can look for fights and you can look to join in a fight, but in this mid game area, the past the 15 minute mark or typically past the 20 minute mark, it's very dangerous to push lanes alone. You kind of have to make the judgment call. But overall, you want to be always farming. Just farm. If you don't know what to do, hit a creep. This applies for basically every hard carry, but Morphling in particular. As I said, you need to always have an item advantage on this hero, because when you do, you're one of the biggest threats in Dota for the reasons that I said previously. You notice. The smoke gank doesn't go well, he goes back, farms an engine camp. You are always trying to make a play as this hero. Doesn't matter if it's on a hero or creeps, you're making a play. This is basically a key Dota tenant for cores at every level. Now let's talk about his kill attempt on Lina here. This is kind of the E-Blade combo. If you guys aren't familiar, you cast your E-Blade, you cast your Adaptive Strike, and they're dead. But basically, whenever you go on someone like this, you should always have the anticipation, especially if there's no vision, to start morphing strength. Right, in this situation here, it actually keeps him alive, and then you notice he instantly turns into the SF. He actually didn't have to there, but it just kind of sticks with the key theme of once a fight breaks out, you want to turn into someone right away. It's just very important to do that, um, as it allows you to, as I said, keep the rally of spells going, and guarantee that you're able to pump out damage. Next, I want to talk about an idea I formulated recently that I think will help a lot of you carry players keep on pace, especially with a hero like Morphling, where farming is so important. So the idea stems purely off of last hits, and what I like to call it is the 50-60 rule, where basically at the 10 minute mark, you should strive for around 50 CS, and by the 20 minute mark, you should have at least 60 more. Now typically, once you get to the highest level, or if you're around Ancient and above, I would say you want to have at least a 50-70 or 50-80 rule, and you can honestly even go higher, right? I would even be willing to say that you can go to 50 to 100. But from a base level and a learning standpoint, you should always get more CS from the 10 to 20 minute mark than you did from the 0 to 10 minute mark. I see carry players, especially on a hero like Morphling who can fight early if they really need to, especially with their ultimate, just constantly fighting and looking for kills. If you are not continuing scaling through creeps, you will not rise in MMR. It is very difficult to play like this, and for a hero like Morphling it does not work. You notice Samael, he started off, I believe he had around 48 CS or so around the 10 minute mark, and now at the... 21 minute mark he has 155 which is obviously more than enough um, he could even go higher right you can always do better but the thing is take this rule into consideration and if you're not meeting these standards relook at your efficiency watch your replay and pay attention to the map movements you're making are you wasting too much time if you are walking around too much not hitting a creeper or a hero you are doing something wrong now why is eblade a good item on morphling and why would he buy it first here? So I, the reason why I think Eblade is actually a legitimate choice here for him is purely because his team lacks catch. Now that might sound crazy, how does Eblade help with a lack of catch? But hard carries who can't burst people get kited when they either lack catch on their team or the enemy team has disengaged. Now the enemy team has very good disengage as they have a Juggernaut who can spin, an Abaddon who can shield people, and a Legion who can purge people. In addition, the SF has a Blink Dagger. So basically, what you have to consider is that it's very hard for him to stay on top of people. E-Blade negates that, right? You simply burst someone. And burst allows you to not worry about Kite. So in a game like this, where he only has a CM and an Oracle, two heroes that don't really catch, even Doom is barely a catch hero in many scenarios, especially against all this purge, then an E-Blade basically compensates for that. Otherwise, in a game like this, I think he could have rushed to Lincoln's. Good against Laguna, good against um, the duel. So pretty solid Lincoln's game, but I think because his team lacks cash and the ability to burst due to their lack of disable, then it's very good for him to have E-Blade. 
Now let's talk about target choice in this next upcoming fight. This is probably one of the last points we'll be going over, but just to give you a background before we actually watch this fight, on Morphling, when you hit your Reblade, the person you want to go on is whoever you can one-shot. If you can one-shot them, you should go on them. Typically, around the time you get your Reblade, you'll be able to burst weak agility cores and supports. In a game like this, you can burst the Lina and maybe the Shadow Fiend if he gets on top of him. But you notice, sees the Lina, boom, kills her, right? Not gonna wait. If you can take someone out of the fight with your E-Blade, that is what you do. In this situation, it gets him in a weird spot, and Oracle actually is one of the worst pairings with Morphling, because I don't really know exactly how the interaction works, but it just doesn't work properly. It doesn't help you. I don't think you can morph strength in Oracle ulti, but basically he runs out of mana due to the Juggernaut Diffusal Blade, and that makes his fight very hard. But the thing is, his target priority is what you need to look at in that situation. He goes on the Lina and kills her right off the bat. Now, it doesn't win his team the fight, but it is the right idea. In addition, he turned into the Legion, which I forgot to note, right? You burst the low HP targets, you turn into a whatever hero you want, and that is how you start a fight. That is a very, very good start to the majority of fights. All right, let's watch one more fight before we wrap up this video and just pay close attention to how he dominates this fight. Smell plays this basically perfectly. In this situation, you notice he's just going for the first target he sees. In fact, I'd like to make a maybe a slight adjustment to what I said earlier. You do want to go on the burstable targets if possible, but also, if you think the fight is going to be spread out, you should use E-Blade as fast as possible. It is only a 20 second cooldown, so it is definitely a possibility to use it twice in a fight, maybe even three times if it really does go that long. So going on the first person you see and elongated fights or in fights where you can't see your key target it's totally fine to just go on the first person you see but after that he turns into the lena and manages to land a stun right his spells are on cooldown waveform on cooldown adaptive strike on cooldown ethereal blade on cooldown so what do you do you don't just stand there and right click you look to see if you can turn into someone cast their spells and then after you do then you're gonna look to commit and right click some people but at this point his spells are already coming up off cooldown so you can get another waveform off after his waveform he turns into lena his e-blade is now off cooldown and he can burst the jug and that is why you cast your e-blade early and another reason why you just want to burst the first target possible if you burst them first and take out maybe a control threat then you're going to be able to get the enemy hard carry to waste their bkb have their Lincolns popped, whatever defensive item they have, or defensive ability. And so, your team can control them later on, because typically the cores are a lot harder to get on top of, and you can get your E-Blade off. It makes a lot of sense. Don't be stingy with your E-Blade, don't look for the hard carry every fight, simply get it out so that it comes off cooldown, and try to force someone back to base or kill them right away. So I hope this kind of Morphling really opens up your eyes to some of the abusable tactics of Morphling as we watch him destroy Alina even though his spellcasting was out of order. This hero is unbelievably abusable, and if you aren't playing him mid or safe lane, you're going to struggle at first. I'll be honest, you will struggle at first, but what you must consider is with a little bit of practice, this hero, in my opinion, is a top-tier solo queue hero because he has a lot of abusable mechanics that people don't understand, right? People just don't get Morphling. He's very confusing, so if you can confuse them, you're already off to a better start. It's a hero like Death Prophet. If you walk up to a Death Prophet, who knows how much damage Death Prophet is going to do? I have no clue. I still have no clue. And that's the reason why I think more <laughs> Death Prophets may be alright. I'm kidding, but hopefully that kind of makes sense. If people don't know what you're going to do next, or why you just randomly gained 200 HP, you're off to a good start. You have an advantage. Or why you turning into the Legion allows you to have a full HP pool after you nearly just died. This hero, period, is abusable at every stage of the game. And it's very confusing. So if you can get past this using some of the tips in this video, I think you'll notice how easy Morphling is for Rising and MMR. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. But before I leave you, I just want to let you know and remind you that over at GameLeaf.com, we have thousands and thousands of guides made just like this one by top tier pros so that you can learn the game of Dota in depth and gain MMR as fast as possible. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, Please do like and subscribe, and of course, I'll see you guys in the next video.